today's talk is about a community institution that most of us are really are familiar with the um, building out in Hadley, but it starts way before that. We're glad to welcome the guitar, who is going to speak to us, and uh, he says he's going to do his own introduction. Oh! <laughs> so in that case, Very I'm going to turn it over to you. Very sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I am Terry Tarr. Um, I will be giving uh, the slideshow and talking about it. I'm accompanied here by Liz Bell, uh, who's uh, been a, I've been a member of the Wesley Methodist Church for 25 years. Liz has been here just a little bit longer. Oh, yeah. So she knows a little more of the history than I do. So uh, we'll be glad to have a question and answer session after we do the slideshow if the people have uh, particular um, things they'd like to talk about. Um, re one of the reasons why the two of us are here is that back in 2006, uh, we wrote the latest history of Wesley United Methodist Church. And um, that was 12 years ago, it's time to update it again, but that was a lot of work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, um, start off with just a little bit. Uh, Methodism started in England back in seven, uh, 1738 with John and Charles Wesley. Um, it started as a small group and then kind of expanded fairly rapidly. And it was eventually brought to the United States in 1760. Uh, mostly in the mid-Atlantic states. Um, in 1784, the Methodist Episcopal Church was uh, formally founded in the United States. That's our beginning of our real roots here. Um, at, shortly after that, in 1800 and 1803, the Church of the United Brethren and the Evangelical Association were both formed. And both of them with um, tenets, concepts, um, basic backgrounds, very, very similar to the Methodist Episcopal Church. And in fact, um, so similar that well, in 1946, those two, the Church of the United Brethren and the Evangelical Association, <coughs> combined into the uh, United Evangelical Brethren Church. And then in 1968, uh, the um, Methodist Episcopal Church and the uh, Uni Evangelical United Brethren Church combined into the uh, United Methodist Church that we are today. Um, as we go through some of this, Methodist churches in the Amherst area had some slightly different names at different times, and I've been able to really resolve those differences. Um, it was the Methodist Foundation at one point, and some other stuff, but it's all basically the same group, just uh, slightly different names at different times uh, of, the, uh, of the history. Methodism in the, this area started fairly early with uh, Methodist groups in Leverett, Bellum, and Hadley in the early 1800s. The uh, uh, Methodist Episcopal Church opened in Pelham in 1831. And it stayed uh, as a Methodist church until 1936 when it uh, became the Federated Church of Pelham. And then again in the United Church of Pelham in 1959 and the United Church of Christ um, in 1952, I'm sorry? That's congregation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of lost its Methodist roots as it combined and shifted around and everything, and it eventually closed here a few years ago. We have not been able to find any information about the Methodist groups in Leverett or early Hadley, anyway. Uh, and then these, part of the reason for this is that Methodism early on uh, services were held in people's houses with itinerant uh, preachers that uh, rode horses between churches and stuff. So there were very few records, very few uh, historical things that we can put 
might have survived. Uh, the first real Methodist church in this area uh, opened in 1842 in Cushman, you know, way, way way out in the sticks as far as uh, downtown Amherst is concerned. And it remained in use until 1957. At that point, the Cushman Church and the Amherst uh, Wesley Church combined and everything moved to North 11th Street. And uh, the Cushman building was eventually sold in 1968. And uh, it was torn down. It's now a vacant lot. Oh, it's oh, right. Uh, right here. Yeah. It's right next to the railroad tracks. Oh, huh. it's, interesting. Um, all that's left of it is space, a parking space for four cars and an empty lot. Uh -huh. and that's, that's all that's there between the railroad tracks and the house that's right here. And the photo is of of the the, this is the Cushman Church. It looks so much like the, the church. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Way difference in size. This, yeah. at, at the largest, this may have had 60, 70 members okay. in, at, at the most. It, this is a very small building. Um, the, yeah, the North Amherst Church. Yeah. Much of it's bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in South Amherst, there was a Methodist congregation that started in 1848 and disbanded in 1875. This was somewhere uh, around Bay Road and East Street, but I cannot find anything that says exactly where it is. Um, again, this they probably met in people's houses, so it, it may be one of these farmhouses that's still there. This is the period of your Mr. Cutler? Uh, this is, yeah, yeah it, about that time. time. Yeah. William Cutler. That's, the, that's, this, the, that's this next slide. We're, <laughs> we're, we're coming into the center of Amherst now. Okay. <laughs> um, first services in downtown Amherst were uh, held, um, arranged by a Mr. Cutler. That's all the information we have uh, in our records in uh, near College Hall, so very close to Amherst College. That was in 1865. A couple of years later, he moved out of town because he needed to buy land, and nobody would sell it to him because he was a Methodist. Ooh. We're there not that other, bad. <laughs> there are some other reasons, I think, why, why uh, his factory burned, for one thing, and uh, the property was owned by the Hillsers, and by 77 they had other interests. Right. Yeah. Services in town um, went away. Uh, in 1874, somebody tried uh, having services again, held them in rented halls, the GAR Hall and Parmenter's Hall. Where were they? That is my question to you, <laughs> because I have not been able to find where either one of those were. Is the name I associate with East Amherst. East. As far as the GAR call, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. If, if you ever come up with where they are, please let me know because I, I've been trying to figure it out and I, I guess I haven't come here to ask. I did ask the special uh, collections unit in the library and they were unable to uh, find any information. I, I think I could help you there. Okay. Great, thank you. So anyway, the, these were very early uh, attempts in downtown Amherst. Um, none of them wholly successful. Uh, things eventually became a little more successful. And in 1878, we had, there were enough Methodists in the area that they could uh, build a church. What's, so, what's enough? People. Uh, whoever can pay for it. Yeah, but how many people were, do you know about how many people were in the church at that point? Uh, again, probably 60, 70, 60, somewhere 70. in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this was built at Whitney and Main Streets. Uh, the building is still there. It's yes. now TIA Architects and Moffell Center. Uh, having built uh, the newest building, the interesting oh, parts you. for us is it, they did it in six months yes. and at $7,000, <laughs> just under $8,000. Fully paid for two years later. 
as we're looking at mortgages. <laughs> so, uh, now, a couple things about this. They built the church. It's a couple years later before they built the horse barns to put the horses in for everybody's buggies that they used to get there. They didn't get a furnace in it until 1894. And then they, and they got an organ in 1905. Now, that organ, part of, it, um, part of that organ is in our church now. Oh, that's great. In uh, 1972, somewhere in, in the 70s, uh, that organ and another one from Rhode Island were combined into one instrument, and that was put into the uh, church in... Uh, North Pleasant, and then when we built the new building, it was completely taken apart, wow. rebuilt, and it's now in our building. And interesting, to me anyway, is a month ago, we discovered that the SD Organ Company has got a museum up in um, Brattleboro, and several of us went up there, and our organist got to play their instruments up oh. there, and we were able to go through the records and find some information about uh, this SD organ. Yeah. Um, that's quite a place. We've been there. Yeah, it's, it's the Amazing. size of two of these rooms. Right. But mm -hmm. you, it's got all kinds of organs you can play them and a lot of fun. Anyway, eventually in 1952, we sold that building uh, to the Grange. And then they at some point sold it uh, to the to TIA architect. While we're along the same sort of time period, uh, we, have been, we acquired a parsonage, some place to put our minister, so we didn't have to keep renting places for him, which meant that we had a permanent minister by this time, not riding back and forth and stuff. Betsy Locke, in her will, she gave a house and some land to the church with the intention of having a parsonage either in that house or a parsonage built. We sold the house, we built a parsonage on her land. Only problem was in 1913, the electric company wanted to run a power line through there, so we sold the parsonage to the power company, and um, then we had to go back to renting parsonages. Again, I cannot find a record of where this house was. Um, between 1913 and 1935, we rented parsonages, and there were a number of them. The last two I've got records of them were number seven and number 45 mm -hmm. High, uh, High Street, which is just a block away from the church, yeah. just a block west. Uh, right now, there's uh, uh, the framing shops in one of those locations. And uh, the 45 is just uh, a couple houses to the north of that uh, corner. 1935, we uh, built a parsonage next to the church, just to the east of the church. And um, it's still there. It's, it's also owned by uh, the architecture firm. Um, it seemed like it. From the information we got, it seemed like it was a pretty nice house. Um, we uh, eventually sold it and moved on to other places again. Uh, back in 1918, they decided that the old church was getting too small and too old. And so they had a proposal to build a church downtown. Now, one of the reasons why they wanted it downtown was that it was too far away. The, the uh, church of uh, Maine and Whitney was too far away from downtown. They wanted something that people could get to easier. Now, I walk that three or four times a month. It's, what, five blocks between downtown and um, Whitney, Maine? But in that time period, who knows? Yeah. I think that if you if you have a list of 
uh, initial uh, congregants of the Main Street uh, Methodist Church. You would find that whole neighborhood <coughs> had Methodists in it. I'm pretty sure. So that it was, as far as they were concerned, it was their downtown. Right, <laughs> yes. So they, their, their church was yeah. centrally located. Yeah. Plus, it looks like they wanted but, to be a but lot by, by the 20th century, yeah, we have other it, people living elsewhere. Right. And, and they, they wanted to be a lot more visible. In the well, we, we, I don't know if you have that coming, but it was also a time when when uh, Methodist Church was encouraging uh, units near the land grant colleges right. yeah. um, to serve the students who were coming, Methodist students yeah. who were coming. We, we would be would right happen? in the center of downtown, yeah. next to the right. post so office. Across from St. Bridges. Right, across from St. Bridges. It looks like St. Bridges. It looks like St. Bridges. It looks like it Trinity yeah. Springfield, too. It, 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 yeah. It's a pretty That's quite universal. a fancy church. Yeah. Yeah. There are comments in the history books uh, of records that we've got about the cathedral that was being going <laughs> yes, to be built. That's right. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look very Methodist. <laughs> um, th there's a lot of Methodist churches that look like this yeah. built in that time period. This building, as big as it is, looks and everything, was supposed to cost $100,000. They thought they had all the money lined up, and then there was a depression, and the money just uh, went away. So eventually they sold it in 1924. You will, as we go through this, you will find a theme here of us buying land in the area and selling it <laughs> all of the time. <laughs> we, we held on to it. Yeah. We really held on to it. <laughs> <laughs> You've listened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. During the war years, 1943-45, fuel oil was rationed. People couldn't get very much of it. Um, Methodists but, um, had a very small congregation by that time, and it was the building was just too hard to heat. Unitarians had a very small congregation at the time. Their building was hard to heat. So the two of them got together for the winter, used the Unitarian church as four services. Uh, the Methodists supplied the minister, and both of them shared the cost of the uh, fuel oil. Uh, it just lasted for those two winters, but it was a really good uh, deal uh, during that time period. In 1950, we decided we just couldn't, well, 48, 49, we just decided we just could not be in that old uh, Whitney and Main building anymore. So in 1950, we started construction on uh, the building on uh, North Pleasant Street, 365 North Pleasant, and we completed it uh, 14 months later for $125,000. This was our home until 2006. In 2005, we sold the building. We own several properties right there. We sold them to mostly to Mercy House, who uh, continues to use it as a church. We shared the building with them for 2006, the rest of 2005 and 2006, until we were able to move into our next new building. <laughs> Uh, this one, 1953, we bought a building up the hill to the east of uh, the North Pleasant Church and for our parsonage. This was two houses that were uh, moved out of the Bobbin area, brought here, combined into one. And when you're dealing with that house, you know it's two houses. <laughs> it's, nothing goes from one side of the house to the other. It's all really kind of interesting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we still use it as our parsonage today. With the North Pleasant uh, building, we had a number of problems that really caused programming issues and to some extent religious issues for us. You know, we had 
uh, our facilities were split between two buildings, the church and the house that is just to the north of the church. Uh, that was our offices and some meeting rooms. Everything was on six levels. Uh, so you, to get to anything, you had to climb stairs. The bathrooms were in the basement. The basement was wet at times. It, and the classrooms were in the basement. The classrooms got wet at times. We had 12 parking places. Uh, we started, we had, a, again, a study committee that looked at the building and to try to figure out how to remodel things and uh, bring it up to code and all that. We would have had to put in an elevator. Uh, doing that required it, caught, would have cost enough that it would have required us by our rules, by our church rules, to bring it up to every code everywhere, all at the same time, which meant that it was going to cost just under two million dollars, without giving us any more parking places. We happened to own property in Hadley. Um, five or six years before this, well, 20, 25, 30 years before that, somebody had bequeathed some Exxon stock to us. Five or six years before we started the study committee for this building, property in Hadley became available. We sold the Exxon stock, we bought that property. And it was just a transfer of assets. We did, weren't sure what we were going to do with it, um, but we figured it was a better deal than the stock was, which was true because a couple of years later, prices just dropped like crazy on stocks. And we would never have been able to buy that property. So we went through a couple of year long study committee again about what to do about the more pleasant building or to build a new one um, in Hamlet. Um, yeah, in 2004, we started the feasibility study. Turns out that the new building projected construction and furnishings cost was 2.6 million. So just yeah. a little over half a million dollars more than what it would have cost us to uh, remodel the old building. So after much discernment, discussion, and prayer, hand-wringing arguments, uh, we voted to build a new building and move to Hadley. So, um, yeah, we sold the North Pleasant properties. Uh, that gave us part of the money for the new building. We had capital campaigns that gave us part of the money. We've had more mortgages than we like to think about. <laughs> and uh, so we built it in, started construction started in 2005 and ended in 2006. Um, now remember, the very first church <laughs> took six months to build yeah. and cost eight thousand yeah. dollars. This, between the time we started this and final construction, was two and a half years, two point six million dollars. A little bit different uh, in scale. Uh, now. Granted, we've got a much different building than the Whitney and the building, but just the way the process works, it, uh, it, it's been interesting. <laughs> the building is fully handicapped accessible. It's exactly the same square footage as our North Pleasant building and the house next door, 15,000 square feet. This one's all on one level. People think we built an enormous building and really expanded. We didn't. We just put it on one level. Yeah, it's higher. Oh, it, oh, yeah, oh the, yeah. The growth yeah. of the Google <laughs> yeah. go forever. Yeah, yeah that, that's a totally different thing. Yeah. But uh, as far as square footage, yeah. it's the same. When you were talking earlier about visibility, we were in North uh, Pleasant for over 50 years. You could walk throughout town 
and asked people where the Methodist Church is, was, 70% of them would not have any clue. Really? Yes. Yeah. We, were, we were invisible. We were close to the university, but we were invisible. We built in Hadley. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows where that building is. <laughs> now, it, it, it is up on the hill. It's highly visible. We do have different programming activities out there than we did in North Pleasant. You know, with all the uh, concerts and stuff that are held there, people are in and out of this building all the time. So we, we are more visible from that standpoint. But it, it's a different feel for us when we talk to people around town because mm -hmm. they really know where we're at. And that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, it's a really good thing, really yes. Good thing. Yeah. Well, Why do you think they didn't feel a need for parking when they first uh, moved to North Street? Well, in 1950, parking on the street was permitted. Oh, right. So if they're, they really didn't yeah, need all that much parking because they had almost all of North Pleasant Street, both sides of it, to park on. And as soon as uh, the town uh, COVID parking there, that made things really difficult. Yeah, yeah, because we are still parking there. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing about, uh, well, uh, going back to North Pleasant Street, yeah. while we were there, it was actually the, the heyday of uh, our congregation. Uh, in 1966, 65 and 66, we had 376 members, which is the highest number that I've been able to find. Uh, it was definitely the highest between 1950 and today. Uh, 170, plus or minus a few. Uh, we're probably a little better now at weeding out our membership list from people that move and stuff, but. Uh, the, 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 the 376 is the highest number that was on the books. One thing. Uh, households or? People. Okay. Yeah, not households, but yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. Um, one thing that is very unique, as far as I'm concerned about our church, is the mobility of the members. I grew up a Methodist in Nebraska. Um, we probably didn't have a 5% in and out rate a year with people moving in and moving away. The, Wesley is very mobile. In 1973, we had a 32% movement rate with people with uh, people moving in and moving out. This is Amherst. Right, it's, it's Amherst. It's just highly mobile. So that, that, is, that really affects uh, how our congregation works. Yeah. Uh, when you look at our membership, we're probably 85 to 90 percent uh, imports right now. There's, almost, there's very, very few people that um, are from originally from the Amherst area. Yeah. We do have two members that grew up in the Cushman Church. Oh, no, so that's nice. There's still that tie. They both grew up within two blocks, three blocks of the uh, coming Air Cushman Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, they still feel very close to the uh, Cushman area. Um, when I'm talking about members, our low actually of membership was in 1983 with 126. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it fluctuates greatly. Uh, this at uh, the North Pleasant uh, location, uh, back in the 50s and early 60s, we did have a lot of college students that came and attended. Uh, we were close. We didn't, most of them didn't have cars. Uh, religion was more, more important to them at the time. To me, the biggest thing is that the college didn't serve lunch at the time, and the church did. Uh. <laughs> so I think that was a draw. I wasn't here, but you know, I was going to school at that time, too. I know what the draw would have been. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, it's little 
side trips here as we go along with this. Anyway, we, the new church, we dedicated in October 2006, so we've been there 12 years now. Uh, that's a neat picture. Keith, Keith Carver wow. took it. He's one of our members. He, he does some fantastic pictures. Oh, he did a wow. great job. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, now, as I said, we have owned property all over the place. So <laughs> we still. Okay. So we have. Oh, you still own that? Yeah. We have, we own the Thompson House. What we call the Thompson House. It's up uh, on top of the hill yeah. next to the parsonage. Mm -hmm. the ten, uh, ten Pleasant Court. Yeah. Uh, we used it for various church activities. At the time, we had multiple ministers, so one of the associate ministers would live there. Uh, the Daystar community, which was, Liz can talk about more, but it was a, and eventually we used it for student housing. We, we rented it out. The students, some of them attended the church. Some of them helped out with uh, some of the maintenance and stuff. And uh, when we made the decision to make the, to move to Hadley, we sold this property. A private individual owns it now. Uh, Folsom House. Yeah. This was the office building next door to the North Pleasant Street uh, Church. This this is the North Pleasant Church here. This is the uh, the uh, Folsom House. We bought it in 1971. Uh, Daystar was there. We. Uh, used it for housing for Cambodian refugees for nine years. Uh, we used it church offices again. Uh, we had uh, student housing in it, and we sold it to Mercy House at the same time. We sold it. Mercy House. I'm it's sorry. It's Baptist kind of church. It's it Baptist affiliated. Oh, okay. from the south, from Texas or yeah. somewhere. Okay. Okay. And my favorite thing is that they had a missionary group to Amherst from the south. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, we, we own that. <laughs> At one time in 1966, we bought what is now New Market Square. Ooh, really? And we, we wanted to build another building there because even though we built the North Pleasant building in 1950, by the mid 60s, we realized it just didn't meet our needs any longer. So the, the first study committee, ended up, with, bought this. Um, things fell apart. We had some, uh, lots of financial problems. Uh, we had some membership problems, and we ended up selling it. And that's the end of it. Oh, that, that's, oh, unfortunately, oh, that, that, fortunately, that was the end of the property, property yeah. issues, but um, yeah, we did at our current building, we own 11 acres. Um, four of it is we don't have the building on and we don't use for parking. It's used for other uses. Um, we did look at potentially, uh, 10 years ago, we looked at potentially putting a parsonage on one of those four acres. Um, again, uh, timing just wasn't right. Uh, that was 2008. When Everything crashed, yeah, and we just couldn't do it. So, um, How about senior housing? Like Actually, the uh, Preachers Aid Society had talked to us at one time yeah. about building senior housing up there for ministers. Um, it didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, they, they were committed to a piece of land in Maine. This would have been a, a, their second project at that time. And they just didn't have the money to do two at once. So that fell apart. Uh, where they wanted to put it, we actually traded with a neighboring landowner. They wanted it for farming. We, we, we thought the other piece was a little better for us. Yeah. Uh, so we traded, and then that really put Preacher's Aid out of the market. So um, it's, it's you know, some of it agricultural residential, so it's. You can put one house on it now. Wow. So that's sort of where we're at. Um, what did he leave out with? <laughs> 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 <laughs>